So the last time we were looking at the Jordan form and we discussed some properties of uh, the Jordan form, for example, that it can be used to show that uh, uh, any matrix A is uh, similar to its, its own transpose. So today we will discuss uh, just a few more properties of the Jordan form and then link it up to uh, convergence of matrices and also start some discussion on polynomials and matrices. I briefly mentioned things like the minimal polynomial of a matrix and so on. We'll discuss that some more today. OK, so uh, at the end of the previous class, we were uh, discussing the following point that if uh, P of T is any polynomial, then if I compute P of A, I get a matrix that commutes with A. That's a trivial but useful fact. Now, what about the converse? That is, if I'm given a matrix B that commutes with A, can I write B as some polynomial function of A? And the answer we saw that is that in general, it is no. We took an example of the identity matrix and showed that it will generally not be possible. So, uh, but we can give a more refined answer to the question by considering the following definition. So a matrix A is called non-derogatory if uh, every eigenvalue of the matrix A has a geometric multiplicity equal to one. What that means is that each distinct eigenvalue um, has only one Jordan block involving it. Okay, so with this definition, we have the following result. Let A in C to the N cross N be non derogatory Then the matrix B in C to the N cross N commutes with A if and only if there exists a polynomial P of degree at most n minus 1 such that p equals p of a okay so so one way of the proof is very simple um, if there exists a polynomial P such that uh, B equals P of A, then it is clear that B and A will commute. That we saw already, that's just a consequence of this thing here, that if P of T is a polynomial, then P of A commutes with A. So what we need to prove is really just the converse, that um, if B commutes with A, then there must exist a polynomial P of degree at most n minus 1 such that B equals P of A. So let's do that. So I'll just for the sake of completeness say that if B equals P of A, then B commutes with A. So we need to show the converse. OK, so we again start with the Jordan canonical form. So let A equals S, J, S inverse, where J is the Jordan canonical form of this matrix A. Then 
So what we need to show is that if D commutes with A, then there exists a polynomial P of degree at most n minus 1 such that B equals P of A. Now, so basically the starting point is that uh, AB equals PA. Then um, this, uh, this implies, um, I'll just substitute for A. So S, J, S inverse B equals B, S, J, S inverse, which in turn implies S is an invertible matrix, so I can multiply by S inverse, and then I can, on the left, and I can multiply by S on the right. And what I will get is uh, J times S inverse BS is equal to S inverse BS times J, where I'm just putting brackets to show uh, that S inverse BS and J now need, uh, if, if, if A and B commute, then S inverse BS commutes with J. So basically, if we can show that S inverse BS equals P of J, then, so I'll write that. So if we can show that S inverse BS, this is some other matrix, okay? And if we can show that this is equal to P of J, um, then, if I see, it, so then B will be equal to um, S P of J times S inverse. And uh, this, if you consider the polynomial expansion, you, you can see that this S and S inverse can be pulled inside this polynomial function. And so we can write this as P of S J S inverse, which is equal to P of A. So whatever polynomial we find, which connects S inverse BS to J, is the same polynomial that will connect, connect B to A. So basically the problem then reduces to, um, assuming that now, um, assuming that this matrix A that we had considered earlier is actually this Jordan matrix, and the matrix B we had considered was this S inverse BS matrix here. Okay, so. Uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, sir, could you repeat how we went from B equal to S, P, J, S inverse uh, to down? Uh, so, see, P, J, in general, and so you don't have to pay attention. I mean, I'm just giving you an illustration here. So I can write it as some A0 times, uh, say, the identity plus, say, A1 times J plus, a to j squared plus etc. up to uh, we've said that it's of degree at most n minus 1 so I'll write it as a n minus 1 j n minus 1 something like this. So if I day if I do s p of j s inverse that's going to be equal to a naught times s i s inverse plus a 1 S J S inverse plus A two S J S inverse S J S inverse plus etc. Right, and so basically you see that this is actually equal to. So this is this matrix. So the, whatever is this. So if I call this sum, um, if I call S J S inverse as some matrix A, then what I have here is this is just the identity matrix. This is the matrix A. This is the matrix A square, these two together. And similarly here I'll get A to the N minus one. So this is nothing but P of A. So that's all I'm trying to say there. Okay, sir. So what we've shown is that um, um, basically, um, so one way to say it is that uh, 
it's okay to assume A is a Jordan matrix. And proceed, because we know that if uh, if we can if we can show that a Jordan if a Jordan matrix commutes with B, then I can write B as a polynomial of that Jordan matrix. Then I know how to write. If uh, if A were not a Jordan matrix, I know how to write B as a polynomial of A. It's the same polynomial that will work. So now the what we need to show is that if B J equals J B then B can be written as some polynomial of this J. So now we use the fact that A is non-derogatory, which is what we assumed in the statement of the theorem. So um, since A is non-derogatory, Um, it's, it's Jordan form, or a, a is already in Jordan form. We can write A as a block diagonal matrix with, say, J N1 of lambda 1, J, say, NK of lambda K, and zeros everywhere else. And these lambdas are distinct. So basically what we mean by non-derogatory is that each lambda will occur in only one Jordan block. The geometric multiplicity of every eigenvalue equals one. Where lambda one through lambda k are distinct. Uh, a distinct, just to be clear, eigenvalues of A. Now, um, so this this is a certain partition on an n cross n matrix. Okay, the first one is of size n1 cross n1. The next diagonal block is of size n2 cross n2. And the last diagonal block is of size nk cross nk. I'll consider the same partition on B. with B i j partitioned according to A. OK, then uh, basically, so now a B equals B A. That's what we are given. Uh, B commutes with this Jordan form matrix. And so if I consider the off diagonal blocks of A B minus B A. A B minus B A equals zero. So the off diagonal blocks of A B minus B A are of the form J N I of lambda I B I J minus B I J J N J of lambda J. Okay, so we just all you have to do is to consider this product. There's a matrix like this. 
So I'll just write this out here, but uh, you have to just work out. So I'll I'll just write it in short. I'll write it as J1 JK, and I have B11 through B. 1k bk1 through bkk and then i have to do minus b11 b1k bk1 through bkk times j1 through jk and then look at the ij entry IJ block 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 matrix. OK, and that th that's what this thing reduces to. So you can see that that is the case. OK. Um, so this is the off diagonal um, block, and this is also equal to a zero matrix because AB minus BA equals zero. OK, and uh, since these lambdas are assumed to be distinct, um, it can be shown that this, for the fact that this is equal to zero, this implies that bij equal to zero for, for i not equal to j. This is a little exercise, um, but I'll uh, maybe indicate to you how one arrives at this. So, for example, if I consider just two cross two blocks, um, and for ease of notation, I'll consider um, <clears throat> uh, instead of lambda i and lambda j, I'll consider lambda one and lambda two. This is the first, uh, so lambda one here also. So this is the first Jordan block. This times the corresponding matrix for of B, which is B11, say B12, B21, and B22, minus the this matrix here, which is again B11, B12, B21, B22, times the second Jordan block which is some, something associated with lambda j, which is um, lambda 2, 1, 0, lambda 2. OK, and lambda 1 equal is, is different from lambda 2. So if I expand this out, what I'll get is lambda 1, b11 one one plus B21, lambda 1, B12 plus B22, lambda 1, B21, and lambda 1, B22 minus lambda 2, B11. and b11 plus lambda 2 b12 and um, lambda 2 b21 and b21 plus lambda 2 b22 and this thing should be equal to zero and this is equal to Lambda one B one one minus Lambda two. Okay, let me write it this way. Lambda one minus Lambda two B one one plus B two one. And here it is Lambda one minus Lambda two B one two plus B two two. And here it is. Lambda one minus lambda two p two one, and um, here it is 
lambda 1 minus lambda 2 p2 2 plus b2 1 uh, minus b2 1 equals 0. So if I notice here, lambda 1 minus lambda 2, b21 equals 0, and lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2. So b21 is equal to 0. And then if I plug that in here, lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2. So b22 equals 0. And uh, uh, b22 is 0, so and lambda 1 equals is not equal to lambda 2. So b12 equals 0. And finally, here B21 is 0 already. So, and this is non zero. So, B11 equals 0. So, that implies this, this matrix is the all zero matrix. Okay, I don't have to write that. So, all the entries of this matrix are 0. Okay, so by similar argument, but applied to slightly, I mean, more general cases, when you have N1 and N2 you can show that this thing equal to zero implies that all the entries of the matrix B i j must be equal to zero. So that in turn means that for i not equal to j B i j is zero, that implies B is also a block diagonal matrix with the same block structure as j. So yeah. Uh, in in subtraction, uh, in first row, in second column, there is an extra term minus B11. One, one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there is a minus B11, one, one, but... Um, right. So then the, the root is... So let me do that so that it's clear. But it doesn't change the conclusion. So instead of do writing it this way, I'll first figure out that B1, B21 equals 0. From here, I'll figure out B22 is 0. Then I'll go here and figure out B11 equals 0. And now B22, B11 are 0, so B12 is 0. So you're right, but it doesn't change the conclusion. OK, so B is a block diagonal matrix. And I can write B as like this. Okay, and from the commutativity assumption again, we haven't used the I equal to J part of the commutativity. So This is the commutativity assumption, and this is true for i equal to 1 to k. Okay, and uh, now we'll use the form of the Jordan blocks. So, um, so if j n i of lambda i equals lambda i times the identity matrix plus Ni, where Ni is that nilpotent matrix. With um, zeros on the diagonal, ones on the first super diagonal, and then zeros everywhere else. So this is the form of the Jordan block.
and uh, this is of size ni cross ni okay then so the identity matrix commutes with anything so if if i say that bi times j is equal to j times bi it means really that bi is commuting with this ni matrix so bi ni equals ni bi i equal to 1 to k Okay, now this in turn implies that BI actually has a specific form. It's not just a, a non-zero block, but it's actually what is called a Toeplitz upper triangular matrix. Okay, this is also something that you can show. Um, this implies BI is of the form And it has B2 of I here. In the first super diagonal, all the way up to B Ni of I. So size Ni cross Ni. And zeros down here. Okay, so I'll call this form star. For, uh, for later use. So it has Bi's, B1i's on the first, on the diagonal, B2 of i on the first super diagonal, B3 of i on the next super diagonal, and B and 9 of i at the top right corner. So again, just for illustration purposes, um, if I consider the two cross two case, um, you just so you see that I'm not I'm not being unreasonable here. Um, if I take b11, b12, b21, b22, and multiply it with this two cross two Jordan block, zero one zero zero, and this is supposed to be equal to zero one zero zero times the same matrix. B11, B12, B21, and B22. What this means is that if I execute this multiplication here, what I get is 0, B11, 0, and uh, B21. This is equal to um, B21 B222 0 0 right and so if i equate the terms we see that B11 equals B21 uh, sorry B11 equals B22 So the diagonal terms are equal and um, B21 equals 0 and yeah B21 equals 0. So basically B is of the form say B11 and then this is also B11, B21 is 0 and this will be B12. This can be anything. Okay, so BI has this kind of a toplitz. So this is called upper triangular toplitz form. It's called an upper triangular toplitz form. So BI has this kind of a form. Um, 